In this lesson, we will talk about sequence and flowchart. It sounds fancy, but simply put, it's just a part of our workflow, like a logger is of your house. And as with a logger, the functions are to keep your room in order. So first, we will look at the sequence. Search for a sequence here in the activities, and you'll find it here. So this one, see it as a container. We can drag activities in, and we can even drag subsequences in. Do this, we can do this, and what a sequence does, it takes the activities inside in order. So it will take the first activity, then it will follow the arrow, and take the next one, the next one, the next one. So it's a linear one. And a sequence is great to build simple workflows, or to build simple subparts of a workflow. We'll try to create one of them. So what we'll do here is that we'll make this linear process. We will ask the user about some questions and then we'll present the results in a message box. So do this with me. This is very important. You will learn a lot from variable handling and other things. So drag in an input dialog. We can actually drag in three. So just do this. An input dialog that asks a question or you can present some text and then it will store the user's input in a variable. So the title here, that will just be the first question. And here we will ask the user about his or her first name. So what is your first name? Like this. And then we can store the result in a variable. So control K, str. And this is the first name. So we can say first name like this. The next question, that's the second question. What is your last name? Here, and we will store that in another variable because we'll need those uh, variables to work with. So control K again, str, last name, like this. So control K creates the variable and we can see the variables down here in the variables manager. They are strings in this sequence. Uh, right now the scope is sequence and if we have more sequence, then this could be a little bit disturbing. So it's always best practice to rename uh, your sequences and actually all the activities to, to make it more describing. But we can just call this main hair color, whatever, call it whatever you want. So a nice descriptive name. So now we have these two variables. We will ask a third question. So this one will be, what is your hair color? And let me copy it down here. And this one was our third question, so that will be the title. And the result will go in a third variable. So control K, str, hair, color, like this. We can run it. And right now, nothing will happen except the input dialogs. So here we will take on uh, some inputs. I'll just do this, this, this. Nothing will happen because we haven't defined anything. But now let's present the data that we got from the user because we store them in three variables. So what we'll do here is just to take a message box. We will scroll down and drag in a message box. So now we want to say the, the first name, the last name has this or this hair. So what we'll do here is that we'll refer to the value of the first name. We got that from the user up here. So that could be Anders, like my name. Then we'll have a space, quotation marks, and then a space in between. Then we'll say plus, and then we'll have the last name like this. Then a plus, so always a plus between variables or strings. And then we will say has with spaces or outside. And then we'll have the hair color. That was the str hair color, like this, plus hair. So now we have presented our data. We can run the file like this. And here you will say, what is your first name? Well, mine is Anas. What is your last name? That's Jensen. Uh, my hair color, well, on a good day it's brown, on a bad day it's gray, but let's be honest, gray. Anders Jensen has gray hair. Of course we could use these variables as we could store them in databases and this input dialog, you rarely, rarely use it, but uh, this one just serves as an example. And you can see that this sequence was linear. So now we have created this Maybe we should put them in a subsequence because we will do something now. So I will um, drag in the sequence here, just drag it up here. And then we could uh, press control, mark all the activities, and then we can simply just drag it in here. So this one um, is the um, input dialogs. We can pr 
put in the message box as well. And we could rename that sequence as well. So double click it or right click rename. And we can call this first part. Because now, ladies and gentlemen, we will introduce a flowchart. So we can uh, collapse this sequence here so it doesn't mess up our whole canvas. Or we can expand it like this. It's still there, nothing changes, just the view. So go over to search activity. A flowchart that is for more complex decisions. That is complex scenarios with complicated flows between sequences. And this can be nonlinear. We'll see. So search for a flowchart, this one, and drag it in. We can see here that we can double click to view or we can click the expand here. So this one is a flowchart. And again, since the outer part is a sequence, it will take this one first and then this flowchart. The flowchart will always start here and then we can drag nodes outside and drag in sequences or activities. So what we could do here is that we could make everything a flowchart. We could drag in this sequence saying that this sequence should be first here. And what we can do here is that drag it down and when you see the arrows, just, just drag in it close, then release. Uh, or that doesn't work, we need to be very accurate, or we can just simply just put in the arrow between. And now what this does is the outside sequence that does nothing except keeping our room in order. Then we will start the flowchart and it will run this sequence. So nothing has really happened before except that we have a flowchart. Well, there was a reason for this because we can do something here. What we'll do here is that we'll make a flow decision. That's still from the flowchart activities. So we drag in the flow decision here and we can ask a question. The condition that is to be a VB condition and that needs to be entered up here. So click the three dots. So here we can say str hair color. And then we can say if that is uh, gray, then we can do something. So it's pretty much just an equation. It's still like an if statement. It needs to be uh, true or false. So is this true? Yes, no. So it needs to be a statement that could be answered with yes or no, or true or false, actually. So like this. Then we can see we have a true out here and a false out here. And as you might have guessed, they both do something. We could both dig on sequences or we can just have some activities. Let's just have a message box right here. And here you can see we made the arrow, but let's just move it a bit down. And now you can see that um, we can move these arrows. So what we can do here is that we can move it over here if we want it and just to keep it a little bit more in order like this or we can simply just it, sometimes it's more easy to delete it and oh sorry delete it and then drag in a new one here. So this one you will get used to and you can see here that it looks a little bit more nice. Then we double click here and that was the true part. So here, then we'll say uh, str first name, and, sorry, plus and quotation mark has gray hair, like this. And now we inside this, we can click up here to get back. So we can go one back, that's the flow chart. So this one was this message box. Now we can do the false. We will just um, drag it out to another message box here. We can see here, we can drag it in. Like this. Now we did it smooth. We can double click to view. And again, we'll just say str first name plus hair. Uh, hair is not gray. Like this. And we should probably have some s's on, but let's just uh, skip the grammar lesson for now. <laughs> So now we have this flow decision and we can see that it's not linear. We can have a decision here and we can actually end the same place. So say that we want a message box more here and we want to end the workflow here. So we'll just say workflow is done. And again, you can drag in all sorts of activities, go back to flowchart. And of course, when we have the false, we want the workflow to be done as well. So now we have a, a process here and we can try to run it. Let's both, let's try to have it a gray hair and a non-gray hair. And at first, our initial sequence will run. That is the, let me type it in, that's Anders. Last name is Jensen. My hair color, well, just, just be honest in the first instance, and that's, so that's gray. Anders Jensen has gray hair. Well, that was correct. Anders has gray hair. Workflow is done. 
And that was because we uh, did in the first part, we had the message box telling that my hair was gray, thank you. And then we had this uh, message box down here as well. But now let's try to run it again and maybe be a little bit dishonest and say my hair is brown. So here we say Anas. Last name is Jensen. What is your hair color? Well, okay, brown. So now Anas Jensen has brown hair and then Anders hair is not gray. That was our false part of the flow decision and the workflow is done. So that's how you work with sequences and flowcharts.